We are live. Hello. I think we are. So We're live on YouTube. Let's go ah, live. Facebook. Facebook is causing us issues for some reason. Well, we've got a couple of years, so there we go. We are okay, live. lovely. Sorry about that, people. So, we exciting have, day. Yeah, very exciting day. We are in the middle of the week, so uh, Shelley's still not around, and we haven't burnt down your office. Not How are they? <laughs> we, yeah, exactly. <laughs> we have bought out a stunning gem from the warehouse. And look, just have a look at this. This is the Gordon McPhail private collection 1970 50 year old Craig Anarchy. So I'm going to just slowly open the box and so, then just um, look at that. Have you ever seen a color on a non sherry cask like that? No, I mean, we were, we, we first impression was like, okay, you know, that's going to be a sherry cask. Um, that we've seen that on some of the 30 year, um, Glen Allergies, for example, this kind of color. Mm. Uh, but it's, it's not. It's a first fill American hogshead. Yeah, which is um, traditional that it gets, you know, like the 31 and the 23 year old next to me. It's a little bit lighter. But look at this. This looks it's like it's stunning, isn't it? It comes it's with a little bit of notes. We'll get to that after. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Careful, but have a look yeah. at that. It's just unbelievable. That's what a 50 year old whiskey looks like. It's crazy. That's like, it looks like it's been in a sherry cask. It's mm. just, so this is part of Gordon McPhail's private collection range, which celebrates the ownership um, of the Yuga Hart family. I'm yeah, not sure if I, I said believe, that correctly. But. And I believe it, they've owned them for about four generations of yeah, the family. So so I mean, it's, they're, they're, yeah. you know, they've been around the block. Yeah. Um, so they've bought a whole bunch of different 50 year old whiskeys. Um, and I think for me, one of the interesting things at the moment to have a look at within the industry is the sort of ego within the competition between the distilleries, mm. where each whis each distillery is bringing out a whiskey which has an older and higher age statement it's true. than I mean, the previous one. Even, you know, as you move up a brand or as you move up kind of like the age ranges, everything gets fancier, doesn't it? Mm. it? It starts to become a bit of a competition. You've got, even just here, you've got a 23. Yeah, you've got the 23, 31. which used to be like, wow, that's yeah. such an old whiskey. 31, then you've got 31. A which... wax seal as well, and now a 50. I mean, I know this is an, uh, done by Gordon McPhail, not directed not by the, the distillery, but the canters, boxes, you know, we all know how McCallan and the leak kind of changed mm. the industry on that. And, and I think also what's interesting is, so we all know that McAllen just brought out the Red Series. So they have yeah. to date the oldest age whiskey state, stated whiskey, which is the 78 year old. But Gordon McPhail was like, nah, <laughs> I'm going to do one better. So they're bringing out the generations. That's what they've called it. Um, and they're bringing out an 80 year old whiskey. Wow. 80 years old. Can you imagine? That's incredible. Well, that's I, crazy. I was thinking about this earlier, and I was like, "This is like two of our lifetimes. Mm. This is like this combined, our lives combined. Basically, this whiskey's been around. So, an eighty year, I mean, that's incredible. Yeah, and I, I, I'm, I'm willing to bet before I hit maybe I'm not sure, but before I hit the age of forty years old, we're going to see a hundred year old whiskey. Yeah, look okay. at it. That's where it's going. I mean, the you question know. is like you know your casks can last obviously a long time i mean this interestingly so this was a first fill mm. and, and, and and you wouldn't have and got what's to 50 one years this? 13 bottles i mean exactly. that's the thing so because that's... there is going to be a limit on what you get left after yeah, the, because angels, the, the angels you know? are taking their share so if you think about if you pull it in at the beginning you're getting five six hundred liters yep um and after 50 years just 13 beautiful bottles are left so yeah if you yes. continue that, there is, as you said, there's only a certain age that you can actually get yeah. the whiskey to. And, I mean, this as well, these 13, they're bottled at cask strength. Mm. Now, you know, we might say that and everyone goes, oh, wow, they're like 50 something. No, this is 44.7%. I know, I saw that. That's pretty cool. It's, it's dropped all the way down. I mean, you know, the other flip of the age debate is you can't go much further because obviously the, if you lose the whiskey, under 40 percent you can't, you can't bottle call it because it, oh, it was no, not scotch about that so because i was talking about this the other day um 
in uh, up when I was visiting uh, Speyside, and so we were discussing how you know you've got to really be careful with your casks mm. because if you miss that, left it you know back of the warehouse for a few more years, you yeah, could have had. That's what um, Whiskey Lovers Society just said. Mm. That if you leave it, maybe he's talking about the comment I had about the hundred year old whiskey. Yeah, you um, potentially it wouldn't be to forty percent. No, no. Which is and the second you lost it, I mean, you, okay, great, you could drink it, but mm. you know, the commercial side, you you've lost everything. So I mean, this is this is very interesting that after fifty years, there's already down to forty four point seven. Yeah, mm. and there there is also another aspect because if you if you look at the fifty year old price bracket across mm. all the distilleries yeah. when you look at a distillery released 50 year old whether it's Glengoy, McAllen or any of the others you're looking 20,000 pounds plus Easily. yeah and when you're looking at the private collections with Gordon and Fell this one is you know is cheap so to yeah. speak it's five, it will set you just back about five and a half? just over yeah just under five and a half just over five thousand pounds it's about yeah. a thousand pounds for every 10 years in the cast but you know it's not right that <laughs> that is a really dark bottle and it hasn't been in sherry so it hasn't been in the sherry because it's a hot head year old craig Eddicky. it's um, crazy so so if you think about that if someone wanted to actually drink a 50 year old whiskey yeah. most people or well, i would say you know 99.9 percent .9 of the world is not going to open a 50 year old whiskey at twenty thousand pounds yeah yeah but, that's true if you've had someone that has had a good year and and really really is you know enjoys yeah, their yeah, whiskey yeah. five thousand pounds don't get me wrong is a lot of money but, but you would have really, someone who's throwing a party and can afford it will open it it sounds more feasible doesn't it and that's a really nice thing like i mean you look at even the 31 from the distillery mm. i think that comes in just under two thousand you know yeah, so there is a real difference ones. i mean everyone knows between an independent bottler to a distillery exclusive but i think when you're buying the quality independent bottler that gordon mcfail are and and all of their knowledge i mean you know they have bigger stock reserves than some distilleries have yeah and, and that's another interesting point because you've got berry brothers and you've got gordon mcfail and you've got signatory mm -hmm. um and, and douglas lang arguably xop range yeah those are indies indie bottlers but they are the top their scale yeah yeah they're the top they're it, as if they're distilleries right because of the length of time they've been around mm -hmm. so would a gordon mcfell 50 year old command that five thousand pound bracket but if you had a brand new you know distillery or an indie bottler sorry would that be less that's true um just to answer the question uh from taniato um it's on our website now. It just went live. Right we just put it video. live before the video. Uh, it's five five thousand three hundred pounds, I think. Yeah. Um, like and so I really believe, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that this is the last one in retail. I All didn't see. Ones, I didn't see I any think, others. Um, already got snapped up. Yeah. So it is. It is a, a I mean, crazy bottle. Just look at that. There's it's thirteen. Just, it's not. You know. Yeah, it's not, <laughs> and there's not going to be many hanging take around long. long no. But. I would definitely agree with you by the way that this just looks like some crazy oat bomb and i would mm. i would just love to try it i mean just running through a couple of the tasting notes that that the guys at gordon mcfell have have provided um and by the way i did ask them for a sample of this <laughs> <laughs> um they they kind of talked a lot about it's kind of nutty characteristics some caramel tobacco on on the palate they mm. said um so because generally speaking you know we haven't had those but we've had a couple of um, did the 17 yeah we did the 17 yeah. and i've had a couple of indie bottles i've had like the berry brothers one mm -hmm. um it shelly it was distilled in 1970 february 1970 yeah. and it was bottled in november 2020 so quite a long time yeah so i've i've had a couple of different quick allergies and it, it it verges on the edge of peak but it's the meatiness it's, of that, yeah, which it's, is weird. It's got that oily texture because of the lack of it's the reaction with the copper. Yeah, so with the worm tubs where they kind of have um, the different, kind of a new, more unusual way now um, of, of distilling. So they, they have this very uh, dense kind of chewy mouthfeel mm. to the whiskey and it's they're very, 
they I mean they pride themselves on not being your typical space side style. Yeah, because even it's though not, it's, it's in not. the heart of space side. I mean, I was driving through to Glenfiddich the other day, space side Cooperage, literally across the road, and in the daytime they had the all the windows open, and you can see the four uh, stills. Oh, because I read about the windows. Yeah, uh, really because nice. Because they have like a um, an an interesting element going on where they want to be modern, but obviously whiskey, especially whiskey making, is is very traditional. So they're they're competing, trying to put the modern and the yeah, traditional. Yeah, yeah. You know, but oh, they, it looks really cool, like driving by and just being able to see see them like proudly i mean it's facing out onto the road and then kind of you go back at night and all the windows are shut so it's, it's pretty it's cool. cool operation i think it is first fill cask um it's yes. on the inside i don't think we showed everyone so oh, yeah. on the inside um, of this box it Gordon has given a lot of information so, so it's it comes fill from american oak isn't it american yeah hogshead? it's a american hogshead it comes yeah. cask 1610 so it's a first fill, um, and I think it's just sat in that one cast all the way through its entire life. Mm. But just before we click off again, I thought I'll show everyone that beautiful <laughs> colour. Stuff. Just look at that. It's just, it's just so dark, and I've literally never seen something this dark from a hogshead. Yeah, it's absolutely just stunning. So there you have it. This is the private collection celebrating the ownership of the Gordon McPhail to Yuga Hart family mm -hmm. for four generations. I'll try not to drop it. Um, <laughs> and that's the 1970 Craig Allerkey bottled in November 2020, which makes it a 50 year old whiskey. Thank you very much for joining us. I hope you found it informative. Cheers. Thank you.